Good, we're all here. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much for bringing your curiosity to the stage and your intensity and attentions. I'm going to ask you in a moment to focus those same attentions back inward. I'm going to be performing in a moment, making a little bit of sound, trying to raise the temperature in this room. As he said so kindly, my name is Alfred Darlington. I also make music under Daedalus. It's an electronic gnome de plume. It's quite common where I come from. Today is not unlike other situations I find myself in. I'm often on stage, kind of getting revved up, trying to find out the best way to express myself to you guys. Slightly more dancey situations, but there's no reason to, to get up today. Um, trying to, to see where it all can go, what's possible. Uh, TEDx is slightly different. My amplification is far greater than the sound system will allow. It can really emanate and roll through, and I have no DJ booths to hide in. But, but I, I, I do want to say something. I want to say to you that your senses are lying to you, but your experience is real. It's truth. And, and I'll say that slightly differently, but the same way. Your senses are half-truths, and your experience is the whole truth. And what I mean by that is, if we can play like a little game for just a second. If you guys would sink into your seats and maybe close your eyes if you want. I know it's a little... <laughs> so the first sound you're going to hear, the amplified sound, is going to be my voice. It is louder enough to reach the back of the room and to have you maybe make sense out of all this. Second, if you omit my voice, not entirely, but just enough to, for this game, if you omit my, omit my voice, you're going to hear the rustling of clothes and seats, the air conditioning maybe, all the breathing going on in the room, the sibilance, the S sounds, and then further omitting that, further going down deeper away from the, the sound around you, you're going to hear your own bodily functions. You're going to hear the blood rushing in your ears. You're going to hear maybe the rumble of stomachs. All right, you guys can open your eyes. <laughs> So what you, apparently, what you are not apparently hearing is also equally interesting, and it's hitting your body at all angles. It, it is kind of a beautiful thing. Let's take one step back, though, before we get into what is the cause of that, the root cause. I'm going to talk about my instrument in front of me. It is my ability to, to try to get some of these ideas and flow them to you. It's called a monom. And I use it on stages to express uh, a, a range of sounds, my own sound included, but also other people's sounds, and to mulch it together to make what some people call remix culture or plunderphonic music. It's just an emphasis, a way of kind of digesting. So, moving on. We are synesthetic people. We are creatures who have a confusion of senses when we're born as babies. Synesthesia is a state where the sensory range is all communicating together. Some people suffer from this constantly, and it can be quite debilitating. But everyone has it as a baby. And as such, you are figuring out your channels, the striation, the different limits are being tested. The, when you smell something, it might come across like a sight, and you hear something loud, and it might feel like a sensation. This ends around the age of one for most people. Again, it continues for some. And at that moment, you have actually set up yourself for a lifetime of experience. You've actually made your pathways that you're going to be ex experiencing in the world. For instance, when you see a sound source, it actually can sound perceivably louder than an unseen sound source. Just like maybe you're watching my lips right now or watching the screen. It, it will seem louder. We've been shown. So now bring yourself some forward, some years. Not babies anymore. We're not all, all confused. Um, in our human ears, our, our kind of adult form, we hear a range of 16 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. It's several thousand spread. It's, it's actually not that wide. It's a very small, narrow bandwidth of what you're getting in the world. There's so much more above and beyond. And some of that is ultra-high frequencies. Anything above 20,000 hertz that we're, it's in the audible range before it kind of takes off into outer space is ultrasound. And it's stuff that other mammals notice, but we're omitting. And then you have frequencies below 16 hertz, which are called infrasound, and that is something that whales and elephants talk in. That's something else entirely. So, 
Another curious thing is our hearing never stops. Into sleep, into coma, apparently we're still hearing, we're still taking in the world. But we are also not awash in a constant cacophony, like what is this thing that's happening? What is going on that makes it so that we omit some sound and let in other sounds? And this is extremely interesting to me because that's exactly what I need to deal with as a musician. I need to somehow overcome and overwhelm and find ways around and trick the system to work, trick you guys to hear my sounds, essentially. And there's a few different ways that works. Well, this is that range of sound entirely. And my electronic music plays off this. It plays around with frequencies that extend in both directions quite extremely. This is the frequency of the 88 key keyboard and onward. A few notes about infrasounds as well, because this plays into things as well. Infrasound is a, a frequencies that are hitting us at these ultra low, below 16 hertz, right? And they're beautiful, but they're totally omitted. We don't get them exactly, except for the fact that it does cause psychological effects. They can produce beautiful hear hallucinations and kind of terrifying other ancillary ideas. They can be the feeling of an unseen other can be produced, the feeling of awe, a feeling of dread, or even bodily functions like paralysis or involuntary bodily functions. It's, it's kind of interesting, scary stuff, but at the same time, as, as like I said, as an electronic music performer, we're dealing in frequencies that are beautiful because they are far outseeding the traditional range of resonating instruments. In fact, what electronic music generally tries to do is play the limitations of the sound system itself. It's playing the highs and lows that are possible from these speakers. But so some of that infrasound, indeed, back to that, is that they have been occurring in nature for millennia from things like earthquakes and volcanoes, and that dreadful feeling you get before maybe a talk, but that's, that's slightly different. Um, <laughs> But they're also being used in these nefarious purposes, well, possibly nefarious. They're being weaponized as well and militarized into kind of different ways of dealing with people, which is interesting. And I am promise not to do that today. I'm not going to have an experiment where we try that kind of stuff. Let's leave that to somebody else for a different TED Talk. So I'm dealing in novelty. I'm trying to get beyond what you are hearing get through their gates, get through those omissions, and make it so I'm heard. And one of the ways that happens is through perceived volume, amplitude, getting through to you. And this is a dangerous game that people have been playing for a little while now. Since time immemorial, we've been working towards this aim of increasing volume in our, in our recorded media and our discs as an attempt to Make it so you are hearing more and more of us. This is a chart showing us the perceived amplitude in pop music from the 80s to the 90s to the aughts. And you can see, as I go back to it, that that striation, that jump, is exceeding the parameters. We have gone too far. We, there is no more to go in volume. We've gone there. We, we've, ex, we've exhausted that supply. So how else do we get ears? Well, novelty and my idea, my technique that I'm trying to put forward is this idea that we are making more intimate spaces. At its best, we're making more intimate spaces that can communicate more clearly our intent and through technological ends like this instrument itself, the mono, we can make something that is something very beautiful and concocted and making something that removes the performer and the performed upon, but creates more of a dialogue, but without words, just you know, with music and movement and dance and, and applause occasionally. So back to that conceit of your senses are lying to you, but your experience is telling you the truth. Well, of course, we're only getting in what we can. We're only receiving what we, what we will. And so I just would implore you to not always trust the senses, but trust the feeling you get. Trust that spark that happens on the rare occasion and, and follow that one. Follow that good path, not the, the one where you say no or yes based on just what you see here, etc. So I'm going to make some sound now. I'm going to make some music, and we'll see if we can experience some of these effects.